Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the teaching show. In last couple of videos, we had seen that if you have a single phase system, then uh, density is a very important property for single component as well as multi-component systems. So we had seen how to determine or estimate the density uh, for a pure um, species or for a mixture of uh, species okay so for single component and multi component in last couple of videos we had seen how to determine the density now moving ahead often in industries we do not encounter single phase systems alone most of the time what you have is multi phase system okay and uh, in multi phase system as well you can have a single component system or a multi component system so some example of a single component multi phase system uh, can be um, encountered while you are doing condensation evaporation freezing okay so all these processes they might involve a single component but uh, phase change is taking place say for example in evaporation what is happening your uh, liquid phase it is go it is changing into vapor phase okay so you have two phases which are in equilibrium or which are uh, coexisting okay equilibrium we will see later so you have two uh, phases which coexist okay and it can be single component like we had seen or it can be multi component often in industries when you are doing any separation process say for example any mass transfer operation like distillation leaching extraction okay all these uh, processes they involve bringing together or um, bringing together two immiscible phases okay so you have two different phases which you bring in contact with each other and usually they have more than one component and then what happens is that one component um, it leaves one of the phase and goes into another phase okay so redistribution of different species takes place between the two components fine so um, in multi-phase systems in industry you can encounter single component or a multi component system and for these uh, multi phase systems usually vapor pressure is a very important property which you need to determine okay so first of all we will understand what is equilibrium what do you mean by equilibrium and then what is vapor pressure so for that we will take a very simple example let's say that i take water in a container Okay, so I have water in a container which is let's say at 70 degrees centigrade. I have evacuated this container. So that means I have removed all the air. If I keep the air inside then it will become a multi-component system. So right now I am just interested in single component. Multi-component systems we will uh, deal later on in this video and next video we will just focus on single component system and try to determine its vapor pressure okay so i have single component that is water which is in liquid state and present at 70 degree centigrade i take it in an evacuated chamber measure the pressure okay so what will happen is that as soon as you um, close everything now water it will start leaving this liquid phase and go into the vapor phase okay and correspondingly your pressure will keep on changing until a point will come when this pressure reading will not change okay so for a temperature of 70 degrees you will have a fixed pressure which is exerted by the vapor okay and that pressure is known as vapor pressure okay and we usually denote the vapor pressure by p star or sometimes in some books we call it p sat okay so this is known as saturation pressure or vapor pressure fine so um, what we see is that if you keep a system okay which involves two phases ultimately it comes to equilibrium okay and that equilibrium point at that equilibrium point nothing changes with respect to time okay that does not mean that the water molecules are not leaving or coming back but we call this as dynamic equilibrium okay so what type of equilibrium is reached that is a dynamic equilibrium even though your pressure vapor pressure and your temperature is not changing with time but if you see at molecular level 
some number of molecules will be leaving the liquid phase and at the same time same number of molecules will be coming back from the vapor phase to the liquid phase okay so you have a dynamic equilibrium which is being established now uh, when you have two phases in equilibrium there will be so many you know parameter values which you want to know say for example there will be several properties say enthalpy entropy specific volume internal energy okay so all these properties um, do you have to define all these the answer is simply no okay for that your Gibbs phase rule comes into picture okay Gibbs phase rule is nothing but it gives you the degree of freedom for the system okay so F is your degree of freedom till now in this course what we had seen what is degree of freedom degree of freedom is number of equations minus number of um, sorry number of variables minus number of equations which you can write okay so this particular phase rule it was derived in a similar way for this system let's say okay or for any multi-component system what we do is that we write down how many unknown variables are there and then we write down how many equations or basically I should say thermodynamic equations you can write when you subtract first from the second okay number of variables minus number of equations then you end up with this equation okay here f is your degree of freedom that gives you the number of intensive variables you have to define or you have to specify in order to completely define the system okay C is the number of components or number of species. P is the number of phases plus 2. Okay. So, if you have a single component system uh, and there are two phases, then if I put it in this formula, then 1 minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 1. So, your degree of freedom for this system is 1. So, F is equal to 1. That means I have to specify only one variable. Okay, I can specify, for, for example, over here, I have specified temperature. So, just by specifying one intensive variable, that is temperature, I have completely defined the system. Now, all the properties, I can calculate using this value. Okay, so, this gives you an idea that there must be some additional relations. Okay, maybe there are some additional thermodynamic relations, okay, or some other uh, uh, specifications which we have to bring into picture in order to calculate all the other properties of the system. Okay, so now we are interested in learning those equations which I can write. Okay, so like I have seen over here, degree of freedom is 1, so I have specified temperature, I can also specify pressure. And then I should be able to calculate the temperature. Okay. So uh, that's why I have given you the topic of this lecture as estimation of vapor pressure. That is P star or P sat. Okay. So there are various equations uh, which are available. Various relations which are available. One of them is the clausius clapeyron equation. This equation has a thermodynamic basis which you will study in your course in thermodynamics. What we say is that when you have two phases which are in equilibrium, then the Gibbs free energy of the two phases is the same. So once you start from that point, you can derive your Clausius equation. Okay. So my Clausius equation basically it gives me, you will have to believe me. Okay. Until you read thermodynamics course, you will have to believe me that I come up with this equation in pressure and temperature okay so this is my Clausius equation what I am writing Vg minus Vl okay I will explain the terms what is P star uh, P star is my vapor pressure T is the temperature delta Hv is the latent heat of vaporization what we are talking now is that your uh, liquid and vapor phase in equilibrium with each other if it is suppose your um, solid and uh, vapor phase in equilibrium then here you will be talking about latent heat of sublimation 
okay so this delta hp value talks about what the latent heat of let's say vaporization because i am writing it now as gas and liquid phase okay so this is my temperature in absolute kelvin vg is the specific volume of the vapor phase and vl is the specific volume of the liquid phase so this is your clausius equation which you can derive from basics in your thermodynamics that you will do in thermodynamics course okay now i can assume two things over here first of all since gas phase will have a specific volume which is much higher than your vl so i am assuming that vg is much larger than vl and further i am assuming that my vapor phase it behaves like an ideal gas so for vg i can write it down as p is equal to rt so rt by p and what is this this is p star okay so plug this equation over here the ideal gas law and then what do i get is dp star by dt that is equal to delta hv by t square and i think multiplied by r and it should be p star okay so this is the equation which i get now i can rearrange this equation let's rearrange this equation i'm going to write it as dp star upon p star that is equal to delta hv by r dt by t square from your knowledge of calculus you can write this equation as dp star by p star i can write like d of ln p star and that is equal to 1 upon t square i can write down as delta hv by r d of 1 by t and there should be a minus sign okay so this equation i can write using my knowledge of calculus like this okay now let's integrate this equation okay so if i integrate this equation what i get is ln of p star that is equal to minus delta hv by r t plus some constant of integration okay so i get this equation basically this is your clausius clapeyron equation okay so after putting those two um i have used two assumptions okay that vg is much greater than vl and your gas phase behaves like an ideal gas whatever whatever equation i get that is known as clausius clapeyron equation and this is the integrated form of my clausius clapeyron equation now i can use this equation to determine my vapor pressure if i know the temperature or vice versa but in order to use this equation i should know the value of delta hv and my constant of integration okay so i should have either these two values known beforehand or what i can do is i can carry out or i can measure you know uh, p star at two different temperatures okay so let's take an example and understand it so let's say i have benzene okay and i don't know uh, what is hv and b but i have gone and measured uh, vapor pressure at two different temperatures okay so let's say i am or i can do vice versa i can uh, measure the temperature at two different vapor pressures okay so whatever may be the case let's say uh, i am giving you two values or two combinations that is p star is equal to 40 mm hg p1 p2 star that is equal to 60 mm hg and this is at temperatures of t1 equal to 280.8 kelvin and this p2 star is at a temperature of 288.6 kelvin okay so you understand that if you fix the temperature your vapor pressure gets fixed uh, if you get confused in this white gets fixed you can go and see the phase diagram 
but I am not introducing it right now because phase diagrams you will study in detail in your thermodynamics. Okay, right now you will have to just you know um, use these equations and then we will introduce them later on. Okay, so or those who are interested they can go and uh, check phase diagrams in Smith Wellness or any thermodynamics uh, textbook. Okay, so uh, we had degree of freedom that was one. So I'm fixing let's say temperature measuring my vapor pressures. I have got these two values. Now uh, I'm going to use these two values in order to determine my delta H V and B. How can I use that? Because you see this is a linear relation. Ln P star versus 1 upon T that will give you a straight line with a slope that will be equal to delta H V by R and an intercept that will be equal to B. Okay. So using that fact I can find what is my slope delta H V by R that should be equal to ln of P2 star minus ln of uh, P1 star and that should be divided by 1 upon T2 minus 1 upon T1. Okay, if I do this calculation for these values, I get the value of delta HV by R and it comes out to be approximately equal to 4213 Kelvin. Okay, I know this value. I can use either of these points to and plug it over here. See, I know P star, I know T, I know delta HV by R value. So, I can calculate my B. So, if I do that, I get a value of B as 18.69. Okay. So, see that B doesn't have any units. Okay. So, uh, I have now the equation. Let's write down the equation. So, just by measuring uh, value of vapor pressure at two different temperatures, I could come up with this equation. So, ln of P star for benzene, now we had seen that is equal to 4213 by T plus B is 18.69. Okay. Now I can ask you to calculate vapor pressure at any temperature you can go and do it. Okay. So the question may come that you have been asked to calculate your vapor pressure at certain temperature when two points are given or when delta H and B is given or whatever you have to use your Clausius Clapron equation. Okay. So I hope that you found this lecture uh, interesting and useful. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.